welcome to this new edition of Business Redefined, courtesy of WTV, and of course, thank you so much for your partnership and for coming. I work with WTV, but I'm also a businessman. If you look clearly at my second name, it's Johnson Mwakazi. Part of the second name, Kazi, that can be loosely translated to work. And so I'm in business. But you see, that journey came slowly by slowly. It didn't just start yesterday, slowly by slowly. Of course, as a journalist, I started out as an actor, then I moved on to radio, then television. Now we've had editions over and over. Now today is a very interesting one. I remember it was a couple of years, I can't remember when exactly, but it must have been four or five years ago. Forbes magazine, there was a statement that was written that if you are in business and you don't have a website, you will be out of business in the next five years. Because you tell me about your business, I want to check it on the internet. If it's not there, I'm questioning your credibility. Now, business cards have become so special that you know what? You need to have a business card. In fact, business cards have become so special, somebody will tell you, I don't have a business card. So that basically means you can't even get their contacts. You tell them, I'll take down your number, they'll just say, I don't have a business card. And the moment you remove your business card and you give it out, people believe, aha, we're dealing with a man or woman of quality. But I don't know about you, how many people have spent money making business cards and I've never gotten a return. You keep on making business cards, but there is no return. Perhaps, are you the kind of person who when you meet people, you're quick to remove your business card and all you do is just do? You don't know who you gave, but you see, I have a business card. I just give it out. I don't even know who I gave. And then you go out and make more business cards. Let's look at the other side. How many of you, when you're given a business card, what do you do with that business card? Thank you. You put it in the pocket. You forget about it. Or are you keen to pick it up? Look at the person. Look at the name. Look at the person. Say, you're Johnson Mokazi. Wow, it's an awesome. Wow, your card, take time. You know, I have this business card. It has a lion. The first thing I want to do is when I give you that business card, I want to know that you saw the design of the business card. And the moment you take my card and you just put it in your pocket, I know, uh-uh, I can't do business with this person. He or she didn't even appreciate what I did. So today we want to understand, how do I turn these business cards and contacts into money? Now we have very wonderful, powerful guests here. I'll be introducing them later on. But before we do that, in business there is something we call an elevator speech. You walk into a lift. You're a businessman. You've got to sell. You only have seconds to talk to that person about your business. Seconds, literally. Now, this person, remember, he or she is thinking, who is this? So how do you do it? So today we're going to absolutely come to that place where we listen to one minute speeches by business people who have been there and they're continuing on 
And I'm going to call them one by one as they come. And for one minute, they're going to tell us who they are, the kind of business they have, and how networking has helped them. All in the spirit of turning your business cards and contacts into money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mrs. Isabel Kamata, who is the MD of Precision, Precision Building Construction and Supplies Limited. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm the Managing Director of Precision Building Construction and Supplies Limited. We are located in Ongata, Rungai. Our core business is to stock and supply a wide range of building and construction materials. Why us? We offer delivery services at an affordable price. Two, we'll also offer you convenience. When you come to buy from this particular hardware, you'll find a variety of building materials under one roof. That will relieve you of the headache of having to hop from one shop to the other. Time is also the essence for us. When you place your order, we take it seriously. Our turnaround time is at least we try our level best to do it within 24 hours. The other thing that will make you come to us is customer service. We'll offer you a warm and personalized service. Networking. As a business person, you really, really have to interact with fellow business people. Why? Because we need to support each other. And if you don't have a business card, really, that means that your shop is closed. I mean, it means you're not, you're not a serious fellow. So for me, having business cards, that has really helped me. It has actually increased my turnover, translating into money in the bank. Thank you. We appreciate. Next online is Mr. Javan Victor of Elicris Ventures. I'm a business visibility specialist. We offer solutions in print, that is large format printing, digital printing, and also offset printing of your business cards, and it's amazing. So I'm one of the people who can actually speak well about a business card. So one way someone can actually have a peek into your brand is by looking at your business card. Before they start dealing with you, they first look at your business card. So this idea of people having business card made out of wedding cards, that's a no-no. Have a quality, professional business card to represent your business. How do, does networking and business card help in re returns in business? Yes, it does. Because every other time, once you get your contacts, pick your contact from the person, let your contacts also be very clear what you do. Don't fill your business card with everything. Be specific with what you do, where you're located, what are your contacts, so whenever, if I need to get in touch with you, it's very clear and simple. So that's one way of investing into a business card. Let it be clear. When you pick business cards from other people, uh, first of all, you need to categorize it. Uh, you find, do I need this business card for now or later? So that's one way, and by picking business cards which have clear, precise communication. When you are clear and you're precise, it always goes to your favor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Javan. Now, Madam Judy Muhoro, Director, Imara Capital. Uh, Judy Muhoro, Imara Capital. Here to talk about Imara Capital. But I'll first uh, talk about the business card. In my other life, I do a bit of branding. And uh, what I say about business cards is that less is more. The less you say, 
put uh, the name of your business, what that business does, your name, your contacts. It says a lot about you. It says you don't have clutter. It's very clear, it's very concise. Now about Imara Capital. Uh, Imara Capital is in the business of lending out money or selling money. We give money to business people or to students or to salaried people and we give money for business on short-term basis, one month, two months, three months. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Judy Muhoro. Now, what are some of the things that you picked? Of course, the three spoke about their businesses, but what, what is that one thing you can say if you had an opportunity to talk to a person in a lift you need to focus on this side. How will this business that I do help the person that I'm talking to? That is something that would really have helped or I, have, I could have said, yeah. All right, so number one focus, how my business is going to help the other person. So within one minute, okay? The business card should be very specific and very precise. Specific, precise. All right. What I will tell this person is how my business is going to be mutually beneficial to this other person. You help me as I sort you out. Okay, okay. So we want to take this to become a culture because we're living in a country where 82% of Kenyans work in the informal sectors. We're basically talking about entrepreneurs. 7.5 million entrepreneurs actually employ the rest. So business is big. The language of I want to be a pilot engineer, yes, it's there, but it's really fading away. So even wh wherever you are, you need to begin to think business, business, business. And one of the speakers who has come, who will be coming to talk to us, has really pushed this point. Any person you meet is actually a client. Now, it doesn't mean you hunt them. You need to exercise the art of farming. But any person you meet, you can actually sell them something. But it's just that we don't see it that way. And it goes back to how we say it, for how long? Those are very key aspects. Now, that's just about it as far as the beginning of understanding that elevator speech. Now, we want to get to that level, that session where now we listen to these experts. This is what I used to do. At the end of the year, I would go to this box and I had lots of business cards and that would be my Christmas gift. I would send messages to all the contacts I had. That's a good way, but if people don't know who, they can't remember who you are, they'll just think, what is this message all about? But then I learned something else. Once I get your business card, before I sleep, I make sure I send a message saying, hello sir or madam, this is Johnson Mwakazi. We met at James Cambridge International School. It was an honor meeting you. Thank you. What I've not learned is follow up. Perhaps others here have not even started the process. They still have business cards in some box. But we'll get there because now we want that relationship to develop to the place where you can say ka-ching, ka-ching, money in the bank. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a gentleman who has inspired me big time in the area of business, but not just business, but also in the area of understanding business as a relationship. That it's not just about, 
I want this from you. I want this from you. It's about, let's create a relationship. He's part of a very large network of business people who believe in this philosophy that givers gain. Givers gain. What goes around comes around. I am part of this large network and definitely that network is also open for you. And the network believes in saying, we are not hunters, we are farmers. Ladies and gentlemen, the national director of Business Network International, Mr. Muragur. Thank you so much. It's a great honor, sir. Oh, my goodness. I sent him. How can we turn our contacts into contracts? How can I turn my contact into contracts? Let's look at our business cards. We believe out there there is competition. There is competition. Imagine yourself in this group of 1,000 people having a cocktail and everyone is giving you a business card. Now, the question is, how many business cards did you collect? You may have picked two, you may have picked 1,000, you may have picked 100. Let me tell you that there is competition in business cards, competition for attention. People remember one or two things about your business card. Now, how many of you know of Apple? Okay, how many of you know of Safaricom? People remember big names. So how many of you are running companies that are bigger than Apple? So how can people remember you then? So you see sometimes people having their company name bigger than their name. So when I look at it, and I'm one of the victims, is that I'll see the company first before I see your name. But I want, you want to be remembered. So the best way to be remembered is to have your name almost bigger than your company name. Because when I call you tomorrow, am I going to call your company? I'm going to call your name. That's number one. I have been to so many networking events. Actually, I was sharing with one of the gentlemen at the reception that I discovered I have collected 32,418 business cards. What am I doing with them? Yesterday, I was in a group of 70 plus people. Guess how many business cards I left with? Two. I only picked the business cards of the people that I wanted to meet. And that is, the scenario, uh, that is the same thing that happens every time you go into a networking event. You can give as many business cards as you can, but guess what? People will only pick the business cards of the people that they want to connect with the following morning. So the question is, do you want to be remembered? Now, giving business cards with no intention of even, in follow even following up will not make you being remembered. How can you make sure that the people you give business cards to remember you? One, conversation. When you're exchanging business cards, what conversations do you engage in? Hello, my name is Muragori from BNI, and this is my card. Thank you. And I pick yours and I go. But just take a moment and ask these people, what do you do? How many of you have come across people who ask you, what do you do? Many. And if you ask someone, what do you do? The, uh, these are the answers that you get. I'm an accountant, I'm a doctor, I'm a business person. The question is, what do you do, not who are you? So people describe themselves instead of telling the other person what do they do. So if you ask me, Muragori, what do you do? I will tell you I'm in the dating industry. I connect business people. Guess what? That person will not make even a single step away from me because he wants to ask me the next question. Tell me more. How do you go about it? The statements that you make when you're exchanging business cards will make other people remember you. People want to know who you are and what you do. But remember there is this uh, radio station, WIIFM, what is in it for me? When you're giving a business card, the other person is asking, okay, I'm getting your business card, what is in it for me? So people want to hear what problems do you solve and do they have one that you can solve? So I can say, I am Muragori, and I connect business people. 
I refer you to other people for business. Tell me more. And when you look at your business cards, does it have space? Just in case you want to write something. Remember sometimes you give people business card and they want to write your name? Look at the, how does it, uh, how does it feel, Javan? How does it feel? Is it gloss? Is it something that we, when I start writing what you're telling me, I can't write because it's all too glossy? Does it have space for people to write exactly? So have you ever given someone business card and when they are giving the, theirs to you, you ask them what do you do and you write it down? Can you imagine someone writing what you do when you're telling them I do this on your business card? That is powerful. If you get a business card from someone and they see you writing what they are saying, they feel connected. So this is a powerful tool. Another thing that can get you make the money is follow up. You get all those business cards, 100 of them, and you have this nice follow up that is so common. It was nice meeting you at Gem School last evening. Attach is my company profile, 52 MB downloading. And if you need this, I'm the man to call. Guess what? You'll be deleted and classified as what? Jank or spam. People want to know that you care. So write back and say, Javan, it was nice meeting you at Gem School. Okay? I would like to know more about your business. Who will ever say no? I would like to know more about your business. When are you free so that I can come visit your premises, your factory, to know what you do? Who will ever say no? Nobody. But when you start selling because you met someone last night, they'll block you. Everybody wants to sell. Nobody wants to be, uh, everyone wants to buy, sorry. Nobody wants to be sold to. So people want to know, they, you want to read an email from someone you met last night. And if you want that person to read your email, is it more than three lines? If it's more than three lines and the guy is busy, he's going to go to the next email. I've received so many emails from so many people, and sometimes it's two pages saying what they do. Do you think I can go to page two? I don't have time to go to page two. So when you exchange business cards, people will remember you based on the statements that you made when you're exchanging business cards. And when you're exchanging it, make it so personal. If you go to the Far East, they exchange it like this. Kneeling down, almost kneeling down. And when you get the business card of the other person, these are the, some of the things to avoid. You, you see what I'm doing? The other person is talking about themselves, and what am I doing with their business card? I'm disrespecting them. You can either put it in the pocket, but do you have a place where you put the business cards? You're either folding, and it can even be more annoying if you decide to make it as toothpick. And he can see. And you expect that person to follow up with you? This is something that requires a lot of respect. Don't waste your printing money by dishing out business cards to each and every person. Engage in a conversation first, then decide whether this is someone who is worth receiving my business card. This is someone whom I can also ask for a business card. Then what is the content? Your name needs to be legible. Your email address needs to be working. Not even legible, working. And your telephone number needs to be your telephone number. The higher you go, the more the urge you get to give your office number. So every time you give out your business card, when I call, whom do, whom do I talk to? The secretary. Whom do I want to have a relationship with? You. So mobile numbers should not be that private. If you're in business, don't hide yourself. Just put your mobile number so that I can text you, I can send you a WhatsApp, I can actually say I would like to connect with you, I would like to refer you to someone. If you make it so difficult for me to reach you, then I'll give up and look for the next competitor. It's a powerful tool. You'd rather forget your wallet, but carry this with you. So what happens when you meet people who do not have a business card? And that's normal, that's what I said. Number one, it's an opportunity for you to help them. Tell them, I know of a person who can actually make business cards for you. You even generate business for other people. That's number one. Is it yesterday or the day before I met someone who said, I don't have a business card, but give me yours. 
I write my details at the back. I still have it today. So he took mine and he wrote all his details today. And he said, I will follow up. Up to today, I'm still waiting for him to call me. But the fact that he doesn't have a business card, I could tell he may not be able to follow up. Follow up is key, the language. So I can even say this, that if you want to make sure that your business cards become money, then we need to stop leaving money on the table. Going to networking event without a business card is just like putting an advert on a newspaper which is blank. People will never remember, but you actually paid for it. It's uh, it is very, very, very painful. So all that I can say is that once you meet someone you've never met before, engage first and be open, show that you care, and use words that can make them remember you. If you are running a salon, if you are earning a massage, you can say, I break my back mending yours. How do you do that? You want to captivate people. There is competition. What are the words you use to describe yourself? Some verbs that show that what actually you do is something interesting. How many people are doing exactly what you do? Many, correct? So what sets you apart? The color of your business card, is it part of the branding? When I go to your website, is it in the same sync with the color of your business card? And colors matter. And by the way, it's always good to have an, a, a business card that is very different from others. Because every time you go for a raffle, you win. People pick what is different. <laughs> that could be also be another thing that can make you go for those extraordinary business cards. But go for the ones that you can write on, make me remember you, and above all, make sure that every person you meet is an opportunity to do business with as long as you don't sell to them. Form relationships first, gain credibility, and money will come later. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very powerful there. Turn your contacts into what? Into contracts. Wow. It's powerful. Your name has to be very clear. You need to make statements that will make sure that the person you spoke to remembers you. Everyone wants to buy, nobody wants to, to be sold to. Powerful. And then of course, get a place to keep your business cards. And, and please, don't use them as toothpicks. At the moment you receive the other, the other person's business card, it's good to, once you receive, you look at the business card, you look at the person, and you measure the name. Oh, wow. Nelly Mudoni, um, Southern, Southern Marketing Development Manager. It's a pleasure to meet you.